When it comes to nice guys in the music biz, then I reckon Rob Thomas would be close to the top of the list. The Matchbox 20 frontman is touring Australia at the moment and I caught up with Rob a few hours before he went on stage in Sydney. Welcome back to Australia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I don't want to be lonely no more. I don't want to have to pay for this. But you've been to Australia a lot, haven't you? Yeah, I've been coming since 96 or 97. Never really had bad time here, you know? Yeah. Because I, I think it's a, it's a... It's a mixture between people here have been very, very nice to me over the years and people in Australia are just really up for a, a good time and a good show. You've had so many hits. Was there a moment when you were like, oh my gosh, I've made it. This is it now. I'm famous forever. No, I still haven't had that moment. <laughs> I would welcome it. Um, there was a moment when we did our first record and we had a lot of success on that first record with Matchbox 20 and then we did Smooth after that which really helped me as a songwriter and I got to go work with Mick Jagger and Willie Nelson and Mary J. Blige and Seal and a bunch of other people and then on our second record we had our first number one hit. I think somewhere around that time was, was the first time that we felt like okay we might have a career in this, like we yeah. might be able to do this for a little while. Luckily, like when we first started, our level of fame didn't include TMZ and camera phones and like kind of what fame means now. Yeah, you got to enjoy the good bit before we it got, got crap. We got to make mistakes. Yeah. Just like everybody else, I'm sure we had those moments here in, here in Sydney where we were stumbling out of some restaurant somewhere, oh. only we did it alone. And then we picked ourselves up and we learned and we moved on and, and we didn't have someone like recording our mistakes as we were making them. Yeah. And so we were kind of allowed to, to have that period. That, there was something special about that. Can we talk about Santana for a second? Yeah. I mean, the man was at Woodstock, for goodness sake. Like, what an absolute legend. What was it like when you had to pick up a guitar in front of him for the first time? Do you remember feeling nervous? Well, it's funny too, because Carlos is legitimately one of my best friends. We, we talk every couple of days. We send each other, you know, different weird emojis and stuff that we see oh. on the internet. What's like, his favorite emoji? Uh, the black arm going like this. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's like whenever, whenever, I, whenever I'm feeling down about myself, he's like, "You got this, brother." You got this. <laughs> I um, love that. I was, I was nervous because I'm not like a, a proficient guitar player, you know, and you, and my, my guitar players are, and Carlos obviously is, and I mentioned that to him one time. I was like, "Man, can I? I wish that I had, that I take lessons because I'm, I'm, I get so self-conscious when I'm around you." And he said, "Oh man," he said, "When you play guitar, it sounds like a hug," and I thought, "Oh, that, that is, is lovely." Very sweet. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's he's uh he's he's more special than I think people even that, that admire him really. When you're in Australia, you wear the Aboriginal flag T-shirt when sure. you're on stage. Sometimes, how did that come about? Well, I was in Melbourne and had made a comment that I, that it offended people, and I didn't even realize why at the time because I realized that I'd been coming here for so long, but I had a blind spot to a really big part of the history of this country. And because of that, some friends, like uh, some mutual friends that we have, like, like Alec Dumaji and, uh, and Andy Barb, um, reached out to me and said, would you like to know more about our culture? And, and I said resoundingly yes. And they, they took me up on my word and I got to, to meet a lot of great people and I got to kind of have a better understanding about a part of a marginalized history that's in this country that I think more people should know about when they come over here. And I felt embarrassed to be coming here that long and still just be kind of a professional tourist. Um, but over the last five years, there's been like a veil that's been lifted and I see things in, in a much different way, which made me, I think, appreciate the country even more. He was just a fantastic guy. Yeah, it was yeah, such a great you chat. You keep saying how, how just incredible he was as an individual, just really warm and open and Just really generous. warm and open and lovely. And, you know, he's been with his wife for 20 years. He just seems like a regular guy, not someone who, you know, at one stage was one of the biggest stars on the planet. We were talking they about how big huge. Matchbox 20 was. I remember in high school, was. the radio was just non-stop Matchbox 20. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, he's a great guy. So go ahead and see Rob's Aussie gigs. Jump online to snap them up because there are a few tickets left.